Hey everyone, in today's video we will discuss normalization versus denormalization for data modeling in Power BI. So let's start. And before we start, we I want to do a quick distinction between OLAP and OLTP systems. So what's an OLAP system? So we'll start with a definition. OLAP stands for Online Analytical Processing System, while OLTP stands for Online Transactional Processing System. So they are, are very different in their use case. And online analytical processing is geared towards reporting and providing analytics, while an online transaction processing system is geared towards supporting your core business and recording its transactions. So with OLAP, the focus is efficient reporting, while with OLTP, it is more important to maintain the integrity of the data. Uh, then the data sources, so let's go to data sources then. Uh, OLAP systems essentially capture data from OLTP systems. So multiple OLTP systems could be feeding into the OLAP system and you could build a dimensional model or a reporting schema by uh, consistently reporting or consistently or, uh, organizing your uh, OLTP system. So for example, you've got customer data coming from OLTP1 and OLTP2. You could probably build some form of uh, rules to identify which customer data you want to capture. So uh, OLAP would be uh, getting fed by multiple OLTP systems. OLTP systems essentially capture organization data. So maybe if you are a utility, it could be SCADA data. Or if you are an e-commerce company, it could be uh, the sales that are happening. And then when you want to report on top of that and to predict the trends, you could probably feed that data into an OLAP system. So when we've discussed OL OLAP and OLTP in terms of uh, what are the main uh, goals for them you can see that uh, olap have probably a lot more complex queries while oltp have simpler queries because it's it if you have more complex queries it becomes very difficult to maintain asset or uh, maintain transactional integrity um so um sorry so this one the last one is uh, incorrect so it has to be a normalization olap systems are highly denormalized while uh, OLTP systems are essentially in third normal form. And you can read more about the first, second, and third normal form if you wish to, but we'll cover this. So let's go to the next slide. And I'll uh, quickly go through this. So uh, we'll come back to that slide. So a normalized data model. So for example, you're capturing a person's data in an organization. Maybe that person is a customer. So you, you basically break it up so much. So you've got person address. So if you have to update the person address, you just go to one place and update it. Then you've got um, the region that the person is in. So if you want to update the region, you just go to one uh, particular table and update. If the phone number changes, you go to person phone table and you just modify it. So the data is essentially uh, captured at one place and there is no redundancy in the data. So this is a very normalized data model for an OLTP system for a customer dimension or a person. And similarly, for a denormalized data model, you will basically capture all the data in one table. As you can see, there's address line one and address line two. So it's just captured in one table and all the other attributes that we need for the purpose of reporting. Quickly going back. So uh, reporting is a big uh, use case for OLAP system. So you want to make uh, queries. Uh, you want to essentially simplify the process for uh, business. So you try to build a dimensional model there. Well, with OLTP, you, the idea is that you want to maintain transactional integrity, to, so you form a later a third normal form here. And here in this diagram, you can see that you know you could have multiple OLTP systems. So finance maybe could have one of their own uh, transaction processing system. The HR in an organization will have their own transaction processing system. Maybe they capture leaves. Maybe they capture um, people who. Uh, or not uh, confirming to the organizational policies or if there's any action that needs to be taken on someone. Maybe a very negative way of looking at it, but it also captures your leaves, it also captures other details. And then maybe you've got an asset management group which contains a record of all the assets and how they've behaved. And all of the data essentially goes into a big system called a data warehouse or an OLAP system on top of which you have a reporting happening. Uh, so essentially, uh, you start with a very uh, highly normalized data and when and then you model it into a denormalized data model when you go into an OLAP system. So Power BI, um, because it's, uh, main, it's a dashboarding layer, uh, you really want to denormalize your data as much as possible and as you feed it into 
for for into the reporting layer uh, for reporting purposes and what it also does is it, it makes it very uh, easy so you can see for example maybe there are 10 tables here and uh, there's just one table here it makes it very easy for the person who's building the reports to drag and drop the data and do ad hoc data analysis because they don't have to write so many complex queries joining so many tables uh, so in this video we've essentially covered normalization versus denormalization with power bi and what to think about and what not to think about uh, so i hope you find this video useful and thanks for watching this video please do subscribe to my channel and like my videos if you enjoy what i'm doing cheers bye